So we look at illustrations which are given under India's 103 as a part of your revised study material. So new illustrations, concentration test, test also being uh, you know tested upon. So let's see what these new illustrations are. First one, I'll start with an example. Example one on concentration test. Entity hold, entity A holds 20% of entity B. Subsequently, entity A, one second, guys. Subsequently, entity A further acquires 50% shares in entity B by paying 300 crores. So, guys, initially it was holding 20%. Now it further acquired 50%. That will give rise to 70% of holding. Therefore, you can definitely agree on saying that the B, A has acquired controlling interest in B once the 50% was acquired. The fair value of assets acquired and liabilities assumed were 1000 crores of a building, cash and cash equivalent for 200 crores, financial liabilities worth 800 crores and deferred tax liability of 150 crores. The fair value of entity B is 400 crores. And the fair value of non-controlling interest is 30% of the entity's value, which is 120 crores. The fair value of entity A's previously held interest of 20% is 80 crores, which is 20% of the fair value. So therefore, it is 80 crores in value. Entity A needs to determine whether the acquisition is an asset acquisition as per concentration test. Now, how do we do it? I told you three-step process. First, you need to identify what is the gross value, uh, sorry, what is the fair value of the gross assets acquired. Look at the fair value of the gross assets acquired. Now, to identify or determine the fair value of the gross assets acquired, I need to take three figures. Number one, what is the consideration paid today? Today to acquire 50%, I paid 300 crores. Plus, fair value of shares already held. What is the fair value of shares already held? 20% already held, today's value, fair value is 80. So 300 plus 80 makes it 380. Plus NCI measured at fair value on the date of acquisition is 120. So 120 plus 80 plus 300, total will give rise to 500 crores. Clear? Moving down. Then we have to look at what is the fair value, that is the fair value of consideration, uh, that is the fair value of consideration. Fair value of consideration plus liability. What is the liability assumed? 800. 500 plus 800 is 1300 minus the value of cash and cash equivalents, which is 200. Therefore, 1300 minus, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, 500 plus 800, 1300 minus 200 cash and cash equivalents will give me a total answer of 1100. 1100 is considered as fair value of gross assets acquired this should be compared with the identified fair value of identified asset fair value of identified asset in this situation if you look at the assets the only identifiable asset is a building which has a fair value of 1000 crores so part a total is 1100 part b total is 1000 therefore your consideration is a substantial part or concentrated in the fair value of the building which is 91%. Therefore, as a matter of judgment, it cannot be considered as a business combination. It is only an asset being acquired. So in the above scenario, substantially all fair value of the gross assets is concentrated in the single identifiable asset of building. Hence, it is an asset acquisition that is concentrated in a single identifiable asset that is building. A judgment is required to conclude on the word substantially as the same is not defined by the standard. In our view, we consider 91 as substantial to conclude that the above transaction is not a business combination, but is only a asset acquisition. Now, moving further. Simple business combination. X is a liquor manufacturer, has traded for a number of years. The company produces variety of liquor and employs a workforce of machine operators, testers, and other operational marketing and administrative staff. It owns and operates the factory, warehouse, machinery, holds raw material and finished products. Guys, this is a proper business function. They are involving in owning, operating the factory, warehouse, machinery, holding raw material, fin getting the finished goods, 
everything they are doing. So this is a business process. On 1st Jan, company Y pays 80 US dollars, uh, 80 million US dollars to acquire 100% of ordinary shares of company X. No other type of share is issued by company X. On the same day, the four main executive directors of company Y take on the same roles of company X. In this case, it is clear that X is a business. It operates in trade of variety of SX and is used by its employees in a number of related activities. These assets and activities are necessarily integrated in order to create and sell the company's products. As per the definition in the above acquisition, it includes inputs. Thus, it can be con concluded that a significant process acquired along with other inputs. Thus, Y obtains control on 1st January by acquiring 100% of voting rights. It should be covered as per in days 103 and should be classified as a business combination. Look at example 3 then. D is a development stage entity that has not started any revenue generating operations. The existing workforce consists mainly of research engineers who are developing a new technology that a pending patent application. Negotiations to license this technology to a number of customers are at an advanced stage. Company A requires additional funding to complete the development and commence the planned commercial production. The value of the net identifiable assets in D is 750 million. Company A pays 600 million in exchange of 60% of entity D, a controlling interest. Although company D is not yet earning revenues, there are a number of indicators that is sufficiently integrated set of activities and assets that are capable of being managed to produce a return to the investor. In particular, Company D employs specialist engineers developing a know-how and is pursuing a viable plan to complete the development work and commence the product commercial production. Has identified and will be accessing the customers willing to buy the output. In addition, Company A pays a premium of goodwill for 60% interest. In absence of evidence to the contrary, D is assumed to be a business and this acquisition of 60% is uh, by company A should be considered as a business combination as per India's 103. One last example before I go into illustrations. Acquisition of entity A or entity holding investment property. Company A acquires 100% of equity and voting rights of P, a subsidiary of property investment company. Company P owns three investment properties. These properties are single tenant industrial warehouses subjected to long term leases. The lease obliges company P to provide basic maintenance and security services. There are other activities also, but they are very basic in nature is what he say, which have been outsourced to a third party contractor. The administration of company P leases were carried out by an employee of its former parent company on a part time basis but his individual did not transfer any new owner to the new owner. In most cases, the assets and liabilities are capable of generating revenues and combined with all or many activities might to earn the revenues would constitute a business. However, investment property is a specific case in which a earning a return to the investor is a defining character of the asset. So you don't need any other activities. One investment property by itself is capable of generating cash flows or returns to the owner of the asset. Accordingly, revenue generation and activities are specific and auxiliary to the inventory investment property. Its tenancy agreement should therefore be given a lower weightage in assessment of whether acquiry is a business or not. For that process, basic maintenance and security services, they are not critical to the ability to continue to continue producing outputs. Also process such, uh, such as basic maintenance and security are not unique. They can be easily replaced without significant cost. In our view, the purchase of investment property with tenants and services are purely ancillary to the property and its tenancy agreement should not generally be accounted as an asset purchase. Here, yeah? to generally be accounted as asset purchase. So you might say, sir, building is not being acquired. Tenancy rights are also acquired. The tenancy agreements are also acquired. Anxiety services are also provided. So can't I treat it as a business? 
guys you need to understand that the basic nature of investment property itself is to derive revenues so this there is only basic security services and maintenance services which are involved therefore they should not be looked at separately it is predominantly the purchase of property if you are taking over company p it cannot be considered as business combination acquisition of an entity holding investment property company a acquires 100% equity and voting rights of company b or q which owns three investment properties the in properties are multi tenant residential condominium condominium a condominium is basically apartments subjected to short term lease rentals lease arrang uh, rental arrangements that oblige company p to provide substantive maintenance and security services earlier question what did you use it is a general maintenance it is not substantive here it is substantive maintenance and security services which are outsourced with specialist providers so that means this is not a basic nature activity it cannot be treated as ancillary to the investment property it by itself is a process a business process company q has five employees who ideally direct the tenants and, and with the outsource contractors to resolve any non routine security and maintenance requirement these employees are involved in a variety of lease management tasks and marketing activities to maximize the quality of tenants and rental income in this case the company q consists of revenue generating assets together with employees and also activities which clearly go beyond ancillary activities to the property and tenancy arrangements further process identification and selection of tenants lease negotiation rent reviews is critical to the ability to continue producing outputs to maximize the rental income and the quality of the tenants therefore company q should be considered as a business and should not be considered as an asset asset acquisition separately seller retains some activities and assets company s is a manufacturer of a wide range of products the company's payroll and accounting system is managed by a separate cost center supporting all operating segments and the head office function company a agrees to acquire the trade assets liabilities and workforce of the operating segments of company s but did not acquire the payroll and account cost center or any head office function company a is a direct competitor of company s in this case the activities and assets within the operating segments are capable of being managed as a business so company a accounts for the business combination and the payroll or the cost center or head office functions are typically not creating any output they are generally not considered as an essential element in assessing whether the integrated set of activities or the business or the asset is a business or not oh what he took over is trade assets liabilities workforce which is integral to generating output from the business the what he did not take over is simple payroll and accounting cost center which is not directly generating any economic benefit and they are not directly integrated to the other assets as well therefore takeover of company s by company a should still be considered as a business combination acquisition of shell company company a is a property development company with a number of subsidiary companies each of which has a single developer after completion of development company a sells its equity investment because the applicable tax rate is lower than the applicable to the sale of underlying property company a is planning for the development of a large new retail complex rather than incorporating a new company company a acquires the entire capital of the shell company the shell company does not contain any integrated set of activities or assets so it does not constitute a business consequently the company a should account the purchase of shell company in the same way as if they are incorporating a new subsidiary in the consolidated financial statements any cost incurred should be in accordance with the nature and applicable indias and there is no goodwill which should be recognized in this transaction why there is no goodwill because there is no business on what they acquired is a pure shell company shell company means there is no business activity there is no asset there is no operations there is no other activity which for generation of revenue 
So therefore, there cannot be any goodwill arising on business combination. So that will bring us to the end of examples on this. So from here, we will start looking at illustrations or questions relating to the standard. Yes guys, so let's continue to look at questions here. Question number one, which deals with India's 103. Company A is a pharmaceutical company. Since inception, the company has been conducting in-house research and development activities through its skilled workforce. So workforce is skilled, so it should be considered as an activity necessary to generate some output and recently has obtained some intellectual property rights. It's an intangible asset in the form of patents over certain drugs. The company has a production plant that recently obtained regulatory approvals. So one more plant, intangible asset and workforce. All three are fundamental activities necessary to generate output. The company has a production plant that recently obtained regulatory approval. However, the company has not earned any revenue so far and does not have any customer contracts for sale of good. Company B acquires company A. Does, does company A constitute a business in accordance with India's 103? Now, you need to understand with the help of definition of business. The definition of business requires existence of inputs and process. In this case, the skilled workforce, the manufacturing plant, the intellectual property rights, along with strategic and operational process constitute to the operating activities or inputs and process in line with requirements of India's 103. When the set inputs and process are applied as an integrated set, the company A is capable of producing output. So along with the plant, the IPRs, intellectual property rights 
and the skilled workforce together are generating some output. So the fact that company A does not have revenue is irrelevant in analyzing, in analyzing whether it is a business or not. Based on this, presuming that the company A has not been able to obtain access to the customers that will purchase the output, the present case can still constitute to a business as per India's 103. Modifying the above illustration, if company A had revenue contracts and sales force such that the company B acquires all inputs and process other than the sales force, whether the definition of business is still met. Guys, I did not take over revenue contracts. I did not take over sales force. Do you still say it is a business acquisition? Can be considered as a business acquisition because what is the significant activity in the business? The significant activity is performed by the asset, uh, by the fac factory premises, by the IPRs and by the skilled workforce. If the sales force can be substituted easily because it is not an integral function, you can always be, it is always replaceable, then you can still constitute it as a business. But if in case the customers and the sales force are also an integral part because it is difficult to sell these kind of output and to identify such kind of customers, then you can always say that it, the acquisition of uh, all the other items except the sales force and the, call, and the contracts of sale should not be considered as business. So in this case, it more looks like a business than it is not. Though the sales force has not been taken over, however, if the missing inputs can be easily replicated or obtained by the market participant to generate output, it can be concluded that A has acquired business. Further, if company B is in same line of business, then the existing sales force of the company B may be relevant to mitig mitigate the missing input. As such, the definition of business is still met under India's 103. Vera Limited, Zara Limited are both in the business of manufacturing and selling lubricants. Shares of Vera and Zara are agreed to join forces. Shareholders of Vera and Zara are agreed to join forces to benefit from the lower delivery and distribution cost. That means there is some synergy. The business combination is carried out by setting up a new entity called Mira Limited that issues 100 shares to Vira and 50 shares to Zara in exchange of transfer of shares in those entities. The number of shares reflect the representative fair value of the entities before the combination. Also, respective company shareholders get voting right in Mira Limited based on their shareholding. Determine the acquirer by applying the principles of India's 103. Guys, it is particularly a business combination because a new company Mira is taking over both Vira and Zara. In this case, Mira Limited is issuing some shares. How many shares is he issuing? He is issuing 100 shares to Vira Limited, 50 shares to Zara Limited. So Mira Limited in total has 150 shares. Out of this 150 shares, 100 shares belong to Vira Limited. So that means their shareholding is 66.67%. Majority of the shareholding in Mira Limited belongs to Vira Limited. Therefore, Vira should be considered as acquirer and Mira uh, and Zara, which is only allotted 50 shares, which is one third, 33.33%, should be considered as an acquiree. In the business uh, combination affected primarily by exchanging equity interest, the acquirer is usually the entity that issues its equity interest. However, in some business combinations, Commonly as reverse acquisition, the issuing entity is the acquiree. So we have seen this concept of reverse acquisition. Other pertinent facts and circumstances have to be considered in identifying the acquirer in a business combination affected by exchanging equity interest. The relative voting right in the combined entity after the business combination, the acquirer usually the, uh, uh, the combined entity whose owners have group retain and reserve a largest portion of voting rights. Based on the above mentioned paragraph, the acquirer shall, shall be either the combine, combined entity, entities Vira and Zara whose owners as a group receive or retain the largest portion of voting rights. Hence in the above scenario, Vira who holds 67% and Zara holds only 33%. Therefore, Vira is the acquirer as per the principles of India's 103. Look at question number four. Sita and Beta, they, they decide to combine their businesses to form a dual listed corporation, DLC. For their 
a shareholders agreement both the parties will retain original listing and the board of dlc will comprise of 10 members six of sita and four of beta the fair value of sita is 100 crores and the fair value of beta is 80 crores fair value of net identifiable assets in beta is 70 crores assuming that the nci is measured at fair value you are required to determine the goodwill to be recognized on acquisition guys look at this situation guys here what is happening here i am basically trying to identify who is the acquirer and who is the acquirer percentage holding is not explained to me but i know out of the 10 members of board in dlc that is a new incorporating entity six members will be of sita and four members will be of beta so therefore who has the power over the investee the one who has majority directors so who is the majority directors held by sita limited so who is the acquirer sita who is the acquiry beta look at beta beta's fair value is 80 80 crores while his net identifiable assets are only 70 crores so i am acquiring it at 80 but their net assets are only 70 therefore the value of goodwill should be 10. sita has more board members thereby the majority control in dlc therefore sita is the acquirer and beta is the acquiry since no consideration has been transferred the goodwill needs to be calculated as a difference of the consideration paid by the acquiry that are the controlling interest and compared with the acquirers night net identifiable asset so 80 minus 70 10 crores is a goodwill arising on business combination achieved through the contract alone and the, when the nci is measured at its fair value How will the financial statements of prior period be restated under common control in the following scenario? Common control period extends beyond the start of the comparative period. XYZ acquired PQR in a common control transaction on 1st October 2019. The year end of XYZ is 31st March. Both XYZ and PQR are controlled by the shareholders, same shareholders since their incorporation. Comparative uh, common control period stated in comparative period. ABC Limited is acquired DEF Limited in a common control transaction on 1st October. The year end of ABC is 31st March. Both ABC and DEF are controlled by shareholders. Shareholder A. A made investment in ABC on 2010 and made investment on 1st October 2018 in DEF limited. India's 103 states that financial statements and fi uh, uh, financial information and financial statements in respect of prior periods should be restated as if the business combination has occurred at the beginning of the preceding period of the financial statements irrespective of the date of business combination. However, if the business combination occurred after the date, then the prior period information should be restated only from that date. In accordance with PARA, the, in, the entity is required to restate its financial statements under Part A. Under Part A, where they have been since acquisition, they had common control, right? Since incorporation. In such cases, it requires to restate as if the business combination has occurred at the beginning of in, uh, the preceding year of financial statements. So that means current accounting period is 2018-19, correct? Because they have occurred. It is occurred in 1819 only common control, the common control transaction. So 1920 is current year, 1819 is previous year. So beginning of previous year, 1st April 2018. According to the second case, ABC will have to restate its comparatives for financial year 1819 as if the acquisition has occurred on 1st April 2018, but not earlier. Additionally, the results in the current reporting period are required to include the financial statements of ABC starting from 1st April up to 1st October. Entity A owns 100 shares of Entity B since 1st April 2011. Entity A arranges a loan funding from financial institutions in a wholly owned subsidiary called Entity C. So A holds 100% shares in Entity B. A arranges a loan uh, loan funding from financial institution in a wholly owned subsidiary called as Entity C. 
the loan is used by entity c to acquire 100 percent of shareholding of entity b okay so it is a, among the same group transactions only so a owned b a arranges a loan for c so that c takes over entire entity b ultimately a owns c c owns b again b is still a subsidiary only entity a applies in days 103 to account common control transaction and c will adopt the same policy fair value of net identifiable asset is 1 lakh 50 carrying value of net identifiable asset is 1 lakh so consideration is 2 lakhs so you need to understand that we are applying common control transaction so as per common control you cannot give rise to goodwill or bargain purchase it should be adjusted among the reserves the common control uh, business combination means a business combination involving entities or businesses in which all combined entities or businesses are ultimately controlled by the same party or same parties before and after the business combination control is not transitory in the above scenario entity a and b after acquisition are controlled by entity a as per para 8 of this uh, appendix c business combination involves entities and business process under common control to be accounted for using pooling of interest method so no application of acquisition method appears here as per para 9 1 the pooling of interest is considered to involve assets and liabilities of combining entities at carrying values so therefore the assets and liabilities in this given question should be recognized at their carrying value of 1 lakh and not identified at 1 lakh 50 but what is the consideration which i paid 2 lakhs what is the fair value of net assets 1 lakh what is the difference that 1 lakh which i paid extra should be adjusted amongst the reserves of c limited it should not be transferred to goodwill based on the above analysis entity c cannot be the acquirer entity a has created entity c and is a seller and entity c has effectively been formed and issued shares to affect the business combination entity c is not a business and a transaction between b and c is not business combination it is reorganization of entity b as a result entities b's assets and liabilities are included in c's business combination or consolidated financial statements at pre-combined carrying amounts without fair value uplift therefore they have to be recognized only at 1 lakh no fair valuation should be applicable Last question in business combination. Entity A and B provide construction services in India. A is owned by a group of individuals. None of them control and do not have a collective control agreement. B is owned by a single individual, Mr. Ram. Owners of A and B have decided to combine their businesses. The consideration will be settled by issue of shares of entity B. Entity B issues new shares amounting to 40% of its issued capital to its controlling shareholder Mr. Ram. Mr. Ram then transfers the shares to the owners of Entity A in exchange of the interest in Entity A. At that point, A controls both Entity A and B owning to 100% in Entity A and 71.42% in Entity B. Okay. Mr. Ram has controlling interest in both entity A and B before and after the contribution. If the business combination uh, is the combination of entity A and B, a business combination under common control? Absolutely no. It cannot be considered as a business combination because it is within the same control. No, it is not a business combination of entities under common control. Mr. Ram's control of both entities before the business combination is transitory. The substance of the transaction is that entity B has obtained the control over entity A. Entity B accounts for this transaction as business combination with entity A as on the date of acquisition. That will bring us to the end of discussion on India's 103 which deals with business combinations.